not just a Call of Duty event and a Halo uh, tournament. We actually have League of Legends. Uh, we also have um, what was Starcraft, it? Starcraft Two. 2. We okay. last we both, year. Both oh. some <laughs> let's talk. I'm, I'm playing more now, but let's talk about what you did. All right. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So last year, they did not have enough people registered for the tournament for StarCraft II, and they had a couple open spots. And I used to play a little bit of StarCraft II. I actually not a little I, bit. Let's be I played a lot when it first lot, came dude. out. I played way too much when it came out. So I was actually Masters League. This is before they even had Grandmasters League. And so they said they need another spot, and I was like, you know what? We can't let this tournament go, you know, not sell out. So I bought a pass and played the StarCraft II tournament. Hadn't played for a couple months. Didn't have my own PC. Didn't have my mouse, keyboard. I just, someone would be nice enough to just let me jump on the computer to do that. And um, I just literally cheesed the whole time. I would, like, 10 pool until someone could stop <laughs> that. And then I would play serious after that because I just figured, like, the early rounds, I'd either catch people off guard and... I also hadn't played in so long that I was like, if I if I try to play like my normal mid game build, late game build, I probably will get stopped before then. But I ended up placed fifth, sixth. Yeah, yeah, um, you did really well. And you had uh, like some legit people. StarCraft two players in here. Yeah, <laughs> I think Grand Masters was out. That's actually, who I lost at the time. Uh, oh, well, I at the tournament time it was, but when I was Masters it wasn't. Because uh, okay. I actually lost to a guy who was uh, about like 70th on the Grand Masters in North America. Yeah, because you, I, think, I remember there were two Grand Masters yes. uh, players who were here. And uh, I know that they finished like one, two, or three or something. Yeah, they in that finished area. one and two. There's yeah, two yeah, Grand yeah. Masters players here, and uh, I got knocked out by one of them, and then I lost to uh, a Diamond Protoss in the loser's bracket. So. Yeah, so both of us uh, play a little StarCraft too, but maybe if you, didn't know, if you didn't know that, now you know. I've been playing a lot lately. I'm uh, creeped into gold, tearing here, so <laughs> pumped about that. But um, anyway, I'm looking forward to HOTS. Uh, I have a beta key, I just like, I've just not played it at all. Um, but I'm still playing a lot of Call of Duty, obviously. So, um, well, I was going to also say, besides their tournaments, because we've been only been talking about those as of now, we also have a 150-person BYOC LAN where you can play, bring your Xbox and TV, or else you can bring your PC and just LAN up the games. And a lot of people, what they do is they buy their LAN pass plus the tournament pass because they figure, you know what? While I'm not playing in the tournament, I can just jump on my box and hop on Xbox Live, play with friends, or more likely, LAN with people while you're here still. And stay warm for the tournament and just yeah check enjoy. this out like we actually have the stream pulled up so I can give you guys like a let's see it's like right <laughs> over here right there <laughs> in that area I think that's gonna work but uh, that's the BYOC area in the very yes. back uh, Call of Duty the console stations are up in the front and uh, if you're still if yep yeah, so the overhead cam is on uh, kind of our producer just let us know so yeah so you can see in the very back section there is the uh, BYOC and then console in the front and then you have sponsor booths on the side I don't think you can see the, uh, let's see what side is that. We have Red Bull in the house. Yep. Uh, we have a DJ. We've got um, ROTC from Eastern Michigan. We've got Envy Controllers. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Astro's around in the building somewhere. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to go over some of these raffle prizes later because it's pretty ridiculous what they give away this oh, year. Yeah, it yeah, always yeah, grows insane. and grows. I mean, we've given out Xbox and stuff before, but I believe this year we even have one of the top prizes, a fully decked out laptop and tons of different accessories and yeah so many different sponsors out there and supporters of the event donated great items to win so yeah we'll make sure we uh we do some things with you guys on the stream as well with that said actually uh we have about what 300 viewers right now 400 viewers somewhere in there definitely uh go out tweet it out tweet out the stream let people know uh what we're doing here with gamers for giving and that it's an actual LAN event it's live and we do have some competition coming up so um so definitely go out and and let people know that we have a stream going we want to get as many people here seeing the event as possible because uh, it's not every day that you have a great charity organization running a land tournament like this. And uh, you know everybody goes out and supports all the big competitions, but yeah. at the end of the day, this is something that means a lot to both of us, you and I, and uh, it's really important. So we want to make sure that we help a lot of people out there. And as gamers, it's a pretty cool cause. Yeah, a lot of work went in this event. It was planned great. We have a great production team, Kona's Corner. And we feel like it's going to be action-packed the whole weekend. We're starting up our first match here soon. But beyond this, we should have pretty smooth sailing as far as getting other uh, teams on their next match and also switching over from Call of Duty to StarCraft and to League of Legends and Halo 4. So it's going to get smoother and smoother throughout the whole weekend. And, yeah, I just can't wait to see. Uh, I can't wait to watch some Black Ops 2 because I've only watched a little bit of Nade Shot stream. Yeah, yeah. Who, uh, a lot of you don't know, he was recently picked up by Red Bull. I'm very big, very happy for him. He deserves it. He's been grinding definitely. hard on the YouTube scene and placing well. So really happy for that guy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Red Bull getting involved in Black Ops too is just awesome. Yes. 
Call of Duty in general. We're just waiting on two two players to fix up their classes and fix their profile and get into this LAN lobby. So um, we're just hanging tight for that. And uh, we just got word that we're actually going to be showing the brackets to you guys here pretty soon as well. Those are almost ready and prepared. So you guys will get a really cool experience with the brackets and get to see where teams are, if you know any of the players who are playing here. And if not, you still get to watch the games and follow along as the tournament goes along. Yeah, so uh, we'll, there are we'll some really good players in the sure. house too. That's something to mention. There what are, are some of the top teams to be looking out for here at this event? Or no, I'm not exactly top individual players. You know, some of the, the top teams, but I know like Felonies was showing up. He's yep. a pro player. Uh, you got quite a few other players. I think maybe some of the Obey guys. If they've, they've been they've been here in the past. Um, we just got word that we're actually going to start the game here in a minute. What's that? Okay, now we got this one right here. So right, we're, well, we're actually in the lobby right now. All the players are in. They're about to be starting in about a minute. So we're going to be starting up. How about you tell me what's uh, what's the keys to win this next game, this first match? What are uh, the keys? Uh, you know, Slum's hard point is like a really fast game mode. Okay, so it's probably it's probably one of the fastest game types that we have in Black Ops 2. So hard point's basically like a king of the hill game type. You have to control like the uh, hard point zone, and for every for every second that you're in, you get a, a point for every second. So. Yeah. Uh, we can talk a little bit about some of the settings. Yeah. L like I said, we're using the Major League Gaming slash Call of Duty Championship qualifier rules. So we have 11 game modes. Uh, the hard point maps are Raid, Slums, Standoff, and Yemen. Search and Destroy maps are Express, Meltdown, Raid, and Standoff. And then for Capture the Flag, we have three maps. Those are Raid, Slums, and Standoff. So those are the maps that you're going to be seeing. So uh, some of the rules out there for you all just joining us. Uh, the small and RPG are banned, banned weapons, so those are the launchers that you can actually kill people with. <laughs> so we, we get rid of that stuff. Uh, banned lethals are C4, Claymores, and Bouncing Bettys. Those are uh, explosives that are really annoying for competitive players, so that's why <laughs> they get removed, plus they lock down certain parts of the map. Uh, banned tacticals, there are no shock charges allowed, no tactical insertions. Um, we also have two perks that are banned, that's Ghost and Hardline, and the banned score streaks are UAV, Care Package, Counter UAV, Hunter Killer, Guardian, and Orbital VSAT. And that's, those are all the restrictions. So for those that don't know, Hastro actually consulted and worked with Activision, or with Treyarch on this last game, had, had a lot of input as far as catering this game to competitive play and esports play. So when you made this, did you envision a lot of these different bands happening? Because I'm, assu I'm, I'm sure that you had you had a lot of things in there that you're like, you know what? Yeah. This is not going to be in for competitive play, but it's still a good necessity because it reaches out to the masses of people that play the game. Yeah, I mean, it was. it's always really, really tough to find a healthy balance, and that's that's the way it is with any game. Yeah. You know, like StarCraft as well. I mean, even in some of the StarCraft League of Legends, I mean, they all have certain things that they have to remove out, out of the box because they just don't work for competitive play, right? But so, you also, it's. I think uh, the point that we're missing too, a lot of times competitive players think, well, why they even put that in the first place? And you really do have to cater that wider audience. You need to have some of those fun factors that people can play those custom games with their definitely. friends or jump into normal playlists. So. Okay, hold on one sec. Sorry, didn't didn't mean, didn't mean to cut you off, Walsh, but we're just making no. sure we get into this game because we're we're kicking this thing off. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you you're right. I mean, um, some of those things you have to kind of perceive as uh, not being made available for competitive yeah. play because. Uh, it's just it just kind of hurts the overall competitive atmosphere. But here we go. We're we're jumping into the game right now, uh, and that's but what you were saying is the score streaks. You know that's yeah, why they're the advantage. Here. We want to make sure that Hard people point are contested. playing the game very similar to what you would play in public matches. And as we're on board now with our two teams, uh, we are on board with Always Victorious. That is the the team that is first off here on the station. They're playing against Crush Syndrome, and we've lost see control. that this is a constant battle for the middle hard point at the moment. Boxer, who we're on board with, has an assault rifle, but it looks like Crush Syndrome has now just flipped the spawn, and that is going to be a very good job. So, Walsh, on this map, uh, maybe it's actually good that you're here in the booth with me, yeah. because maybe a lot of people out there don't watch competitive Black Ops 2 so Hard much. So you can explain oh, yeah, I'll have a lot of the same questions that I'm sure some people out there will okay. have. Okay, so, so basically, this is the first, uh, first hard point zone, and you want to hold this bottom down. zone area right hard now, and that's contested. what Boxer is doing right now. He's, he's anchoring the spawn for his team right now, because the next hard point is going to be hard right to his left. left. Okay. And uh, I can flip over to... So sequentially, it'll always go in the same order uh, for this game type where the next zones move to. Yeah, yeah. So let me um, let me actually change into Codcaster mode here. There we go. So as you can see here, we'll pull up the map overhead. You see where the team's set up. Yep. The second hard point is now activated. 
These, these guys have just taken the lead. We're watching Always Victorious at the moment. Uh, you see how they just got taken out right there yep. and they spawned across the map. So they still have a teammate there who's still trying to contest that. And, and it looks, Boxer, like you Boxer said, he was right holding now. it down. But and Boxer's going to have his work cut out for him. He took three, and what he did was very important. Even though I don't play COD much, he bought as much time as possible. He saw his teammates all sprinting across the map as fast as possible to get there. So he bought as much time as possible, got three kills actually, and now his team has a three on one right near the hard point. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of a really good move by Crush Syndrome. And now the next hard point is actually going to flip all the way across the map. They have 10 seconds left in this hard point, eight minutes left to go in this game. But it looks like Crush Syndrome has taken a pretty healthy lead right now. They're up by about 28 seconds. So uh, it looks like Shasta here is just going to get the last second there, and he's going to be making the move with his team. And now on this side, we see that Voxer is on it for Always Victorious. And exactly where he's aiming is where you want to set up your anchor. Very nice awareness right there, flipping around, knowing that he's getting contested inside the uh, hard point. He goes ahead and makes sure that he takes that player out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map overhead. You see this player that's over here. It's K. He's set up in the anchor position, so okay. he's maintaining the spawns for his team. You yep. see his, his teammate spawns in right there. So that's the way hardpoint works in Black Ops 2. You want to be very aware of spawning your teammates in in the right positions. So this player uh, on the opposite team is actually making a pretty good move trying to go for K, but K has some support there. Yeah. As we take the map overhead off, you see that K is still anchoring this position. And the next hardpoint is going to be in the garage, Walshy. So... Uh, these guys are, are looking really, really good as they re just retook the lead. So always victorious in the lead now by about uh, 17 points. So is the hard point move after a certain amount of seconds have been accumulated in that exact area, or is it on time base? Everyone is a minute long. Everyone is a minute long, yeah. okay. So e every minute you're going to have a rotation of the hard point. You see that always victorious is set up perfectly again. And uh, this is good to note too, what Kay just did is he rotated into the garage uh, and his teammate picked up the anchor position, but however, uh, K doesn't get a very good spawn here, even though his teammate Evolution is um, anchoring for his team. But that just means that one of the enemies is close by. Yes. And as you can see, Evolution didn't really pick up on that, that his teammate K spawned out. Yeah. And that means that an enemy is very close by in that spawn. So uh, it was very nice play by Crush Syndrome to move around. And they did manage to take control, and now they have regained the lead. So you see both teams doing some things correct when it comes to the spawn systems of the game, where, all right, they'll set up an anchor in certain situations, but they won't seem to understand when, all right, my teammate didn't spawn with me. He should have communicated that he did not, because now I know that I have right. someone near me. At the same time, I noticed when they were assaulting, I believe it was uh, Crush Syndrome was assaulting the last hard point. They didn't go for the anchor right away. That seems to be the most important person. You can kill three people Absolutely. all near the hard point, and that does not matter one bit if all three of them are going to spawn Definitely. really close to the hard point. You're absolutely right. And so uh, you're a pro gamer, so you realize that. But, uh, you know, a lot of these guys here, you know, they're, they're just picking up on some of these things. And uh, you see K, he has two score streaks right now. He has a lightning strike and he has a hellstorm. And what just happened right there is he, he buzzed his lightning strike and it pings the map. And he saw that there was an enemy really close to him, so he put it away really quick and picked up the kill. <laughs> K, uh, we've been spectating for quite a few minutes here. He looks really, really good. This guy definitely has uh, some experience. He's got a really nice shot. He's using the PDW right now. That's a submachine gun. Um, he's doing a lot of work right now. As we pick up the scoreboard, you see he's 14 and 12. So he's doing, he's doing a pretty solid job, but he just went off a little while ago in the garage. Voxer, however, is the one to watch right now. He's on a 10 kill spree. He's going to go ahead and call in this lightning strike, it looks like. Yep, he does call it in. Let's see if he can pick up a couple kills with that. Uh, he does not pick up a kill, but his sentry gun does pick one up, and now he's going to go ahead and call this Hellstorm in. So it looks like he's going to pick up one, two, picked up two, nope, make that three. three. <laughs> Picks up three kills with that because he got the car explosion. So really nice job by Voxer. Voxer is now 24 and 11, and he's on a 15 kill spree. Well, so uh, awesome. I'm not sure what that equates to in Halo, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't that's... know either because I've never gotten that many in a row. <laughs> I'm sure you have at some point. But so Voxer is now making the rotation. They're on the next hard point, and you see that uh, it looks like Always Victorious is looking really good right now. They're definitely asserting themselves in a dominant position. And one thing I want to point out is that you've been giving a lot of credit to Kay, and I've noticed just from this being my actually first game I've ever really commentated on and looked at in depth is that he seems to be getting some very crucial kills. Like you said, he always seems to be in that anchor position, spawning his teammates in the right spot. So, like I said, sometimes it doesn't matter. You can get three kills in the wrong area, whereas if you get that one kill in the correct spot, like the anchor position, you spawn your teammates there, that's worth more than those three kills. So yeah. stats always don't tell the full story in any Absolutely. sport or any game, especially Absolutely. video gaming. Yes, and I like this play. I really like this play out of Voxer right now. He's picking up his sentry gun, and he's moving it all the way across the map. 
He manages to get it down before he gets taken out. So that was a very, very smart play by Voxer. He's got a, a nice line of sight for that sentry gun. I aim down the street, and you see it pick up a kill already. His teammate kill uh, picks up two kills. K, so they just eliminate the other team, all four players down, flip the spawn on him. And, and they already uh, have the anchor position already set, so they yeah. know they have their setup. Yep, and his uh, sentry gun just goes down, so Voxer knows that the other team is spawning on blue side. This is just flawless execution uh, by Always Victorious right now. So this may be a dumb question, but is the sentry shoot 360 degrees, or is it only a no, certain it's, field of vision? It's probably about... Um, I would probably say it's about 220 degrees. Okay. Maybe. You know, it's not it's not the full 360. So it, it'll it'll look around, you know, to its left and right, but it will never always fully turn around. Now, when he placed that sentry, was he intending for it to lay cover fire down the hard point, or was he also using it to sort of watch his back? Because I almost consider in some of that situation where, all right. I'm obviously not going to run my sentry all the way up to the hard point, or I'm going to get picked off before that gets set down. Yeah, essentially what he was doing right there is making sure that that sentry uh, was watching down the street because the other team was still spawning in okay. the correct spawn. So it actually prevented them from moving into the hard point zone while okay. his, his whole team was coming up behind him. It was a very nice play. Yeah. Uh, at the end of it, he should have tried to maybe flip it. But I was going to say, time, like, that'd be... That'd be the perfect situation, but at that point, he probably realized, all right, I don't know when we got the last kills. I don't know yeah, I mean, when I can flip was, this around. The other so. team was already coming, but just, the, did just the fact that he moved it from that one hard point to the yeah. next was like pretty crucial. And there you go. That's the end of the round. It's a 250 score cap. So always victorious. Going to take game number one here at Gamers Forgiving. That's our first stream match. Congrats. Hats off to them. We're going to see uh, the scoreboard here in a second. If Kona, you could pull it, put it back up, actually. If you can switch it over to the scoreboard real quick. Let's see if you can get it. How fast are you, Kona? 32 and 13 for Voxer. 26 and 18 for K. 27, 14. So it's pretty much a, a dominant slaying yes. performance um, by uh, Always Victorious. So they just uh, handled Crust Syndrome. It was a pretty close game early on, but at the end of the day, they now, looked really good. Now, always in general, you do tend to see kills, you know, kill death spreads correlate with victories. But I'm sure you've seen, like, in this game type. Totally. Teams can play that smart and the other yeah. team get the more crucial kills and not get the unnecessary kills and even be out slayed and win that. You know what? We actually saw that like really early on in the game when it came out because the hard point was a new game mode for Call of Duty players. So uh, you would see like these crazy matches where everybody's negative on one team, but they kick the other team's ass, you know, like <laughs> because the other team is just like, you know, what, what we call kill whoring. Yeah. You know, it's like you're just you're just out getting they're just trying to get the kills and they're not playing the objective. And so the team that's like super negative that actually wins because they're playing the objective. But nowadays, like people have kind of learned, right? Like, they started to learn all those anchors and learn. Yeah, yeah. People have learned, like, <laughs> okay, we got to play the objective yes. at these certain times, and they know how to set up around them now. So the stat lines have kind of like, you know, they're now if you're slaying away, you're probably going to win, you know? Yes, yes. So, uh, so that just kind of goes the evolution of players being smarter at the game exactly. and learning more. But exactly. Like I, I remember said, the first, 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 first couple weeks, I would just laugh so hard because I would play in games and I'd go you know, I'd go negative, but I was dominating in terms of winning the game. So let's see here. Uh, it looks like we're going to back out and jump back into the game for the next round. So again, this is a land, so we're playing all in system link here on Black Ops 2. And these guys are just getting queued back into the game. And while we're waiting for them to join up, I just got word that we now have a donation link under our stream. So if you already had this open, I believe you can refresh and it should show up below. Those that already tuned in, you should probably be able to see it below. So yeah. Uh, feel free to donate. If not, please just keep tweeting out the stream. Post on Facebook, Twitter. Please tag us in there. Twitter.com slash Gamers Outreach. Facebook.com slash Gamers Outreach. We're trying to get as many people watching this throughout the weekend. Please give us your, your thoughts, too. I'm Twitter.com slash WallStreet304, and he's... Hastro. With a zero. With a zero. H -A -S -S -E -R -0. It's, actually, it's actually right there on the left of the stream. Yep. So if on the left-hand panel, if you just put the at symbol behind uh, Hastro, H-A-S-T-R-0. Tweet at us, let us know what, what you think of the event, and uh, let us know that you donated too. Uh, if, you do if you make a donation, again, the, the link to donate is now on the Twitch page, so check it out. 